Hey there, happy day 962 of What You Up To Now. Sharon horn from here, documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. Been obviously over 962 days now, but I just, it's easier for me personally with my vision challenges to document my journey by making a, a video log every day and just summarizing what I'm working on, what's working, what's not working, that way versus trying to write it down and then go back and, and access any of that information so what am I working on what's going on today we did the setup for success challenge and it's not really a challenge for September we're just doing a daily life lesson learned to share information about some of the biggest lessons learned over my last six decades here on the planet uh, as part of preparation for the next get up and go challenge which will be October 1st through 31st on the get up and go challenge page where we Make sure that, uh, and I'm reviewing the past Get Up and Go challenges. Since COVID-19 started, I've done, this will be the fourth 30-day challenge, and I've done some shorter Get Up and Go challenges in there as well. But I want to review the past ones and say, okay, what are the best parts of that? Let's take those and make sure we, we incorporate them into the October challenge, and let's leave out some of the stuff that's just unnecessary, rambling on fluff that we don't need to be a part of the challenge. So I'm reviewing it. I started, actually didn't start till yesterday. I was kind of dragging it out, doing other things and listening to the past videos. They're always available. I don't take my challenges down. A lot of people use it as a way to create scarcity and encourage people to buy their products and services. I do it as a service so people can learn and not make the mistakes I've made over my lifetime and over my businesses, especially as we're going from the offline to the online world. And a lot of people are doing that during COVID-19. So many more people are hopping online because they have to find a way to make a livelihood while their businesses are shut down. And I actually help people to do that. So preparing and listening to the past ones and really honing in on and making sure that we do the best job possible each and every time continuously improving to make the get up and go challenge better and better and better. And how many times will we do it? I don't know. We'll do it till it doesn't feel right anymore. Right now it still feels like the thing to do to help people through, to help them guarantee that they'll have better results after any change or challenge than before they experienced that challenge, which is a big, bold promise, but it's absolutely positively true and capable. Every time I go through the get up and go challenge, I find myself with much better results than before I had gone through it. And I do my own challenges. So I do a couple things different with challenges. Number one, I never take my stuff down. I leave it there. So if anybody wants to find it or go back and look at past challenges, and I've done hundreds of them, they can go back and watch the videos. They can listen to the lessons. They can read the blogs, whatever, uh, or the, um, the lessons, whatever format I happen to do those previous challenges in. Uh, so it's always there for people. So when you're ready, it's ready for you. I don't need to create some false sense of scarcity so that you'll buy my stuff. I just, I guess I'm, I'm past that in my career and in my life and in what it is that I'm trying to create online and in the world, just more in the world than just online. But since I'm transferring from the offline world to the online world, obviously online. So the information's always there. It's always available on the Get Up and Go Challenge page. It's, it's in past order, so it's a big jumbled chaotic mess if you go to the page. But if you go to the free group by the same name, Get Up and Go Challenge, there's units. And all of the previous challenges are arranged in units. And in September, we're doing Setup for Success, where we're just doing a daily life lesson and sharing the information on that as we prepare for the October 30 plus day challenge. It'll be for sure 31 days because there's 31 days in October and we, we wouldn't want to cheat us by not having a, a 31st day. There's always a bonus days on my challenges too. I kind of have, have a hard time stopping them. Sort of like my talking. So set up for success today was about deserving and you deserve whatever you want as long as you're willing to take action and move toward it and take steps toward it. You're not going to get what you want by sitting and waiting for it to fall into your lap. But if you want something and you desire it and put forth the effort to make it happen in your life, you absolutely positively deserve it. Um, so do you deserve it? Are you working toward the things that you want? I spent a lot of years working toward things that I thought I wanted, but that I didn't really want. And so I found that when I was working toward things that I didn't necessarily want on a, a core value level, that stuff would happen, right? Bad things would happen. Situations would happen. Things would creep up and come up that felt like negative, bad challenges that were really obstacles to kind of test me to see if I really wanted the thing I was going toward or not. Um, 
I see that now, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. We look back on experiences and we're like, geez, why did that terrible thing happen in the midst of working toward building this particular business or creating this project or, or uh, launching a product or uh, writing a book, for example, or something? Why did this thing happen that stalled me and stopped me along my way of accomplishing a goal or an objective? Well, a lot of times it was just to test and see if I was serious about the thing that I thought that I wanted, if I was serious about achieving a goal or an objective or doing something that I said I wanted, because sometimes I found out, guess what? I wasn't really serious about it. Oh, I want to launch this new flavor, this new variety of, of ravioli. And then I would test it and I would find out, you know, that there were, there were challenges with it. And sometimes we would overcome those challenges and launch it anyway. Other times we would find this is a cost prohibitive challenge that's popping up. The resources that we need to do this aren't available or maybe the raw materials aren't available at this time. So let's let's shelf that product or service and not not provide it right now. Let's not do that right now. And that was, you know, sometimes it's to, to stop us from going down the wrong road. Sometimes it's just to see, do, are we really committed to this? Do we really want this? And, and if so, then we'll move forward and we'll figure out our way around any obstacle. But other times it's to really just have us check ourselves and make sure we're going in the right direction. But we always deserve whatever it is that we want. It's just, are we willing to put forth the effort to make it become a part of our reality, a part of our life, a part of our existence? And that's always entirely up to us, right? It's always up to us to decide how long we'll continue to move forward towards something or when we decide to take a break or just say, no, I guess this isn't what I wanted. It isn't for me. Now I'm going to go left on this road instead of continuing down this this highway right weird analogies in my brain today so fun challenge today was about forbidden things going to forbidden places where's a forbidden place that you would like to go that you have never been before but you're forbidden but it would be fun to see that was our our pajama grandma uh 365 day fun challenge today Fly by night was our idiom for supersize your business, which was one of the first idioms I recall absolutely positively saying, yeah, don't do this. Don't do this if you want to grow or supersize your business. Usually I can find a way to twist them and make them, them positive. But today I was just feeling, yeah, let's just say once in a while that there's things we don't want to do in our businesses that we don't want to do in our lives. We don't want people to think that we're unreliable or not trustworthy or that we're here today, gone tomorrow. You know, we don't we don't generally want people that we care about in our lives to think that maybe there's people that you don't care about that you might behave that way with. But I don't know. I think how we show up is how we are. How we show up is usually an indicator of who we are as a person. Does it mean people can't change? No, absolutely not. But it means that we have tendencies to show up in the way that we actually are, not in the way we think we should show up. And, you know, we can obviously proof of that we can show up for decades living and being in our masks and our veils and showing the world what we wanted to see, but who we truly are underneath always comes through, always shows. And so we definitely don't want to be seen as unreliable, not trustworthy, fly by night, out only for ourselves and for our, our own best interests. And, and are there people like that? Sure. If you want to be one, go ahead. You're probably not listening to me, but, but that's not what I want to be. So this was one of the first idioms I absolutely blatantly recall saying, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that if you want to grow or build your business. But I did find the history interesting that it came from um, believing that women were witches and they flew around at night on brooms and then it was transferred to businesses that, that disappear because of bills they can't pay or they go out of business. And, you know, that happens all the time, right? Especially now during COVID, lots of businesses that have been solid and, and steadfast for a long, long time all of a sudden are disappearing and going out of business. And, and that's kind of the nature of, of life. I mean, we all have ebbs and flows and cycles in our lives and in our businesses. And so it can happen, especially when there's an outside influence as big as this pandemic has been and as impactful. And sometimes people just say, yeah, I've been in business for 40 years, but this is it. I, this is this is a sign to me that it's time to, to close up shop and retire and do something different. That's how I was with my divorce. I knew it was time for me to go from offline to online, to do something different. And it, it actually gave me an opportunity to, to give myself permission to say, all right, let's try something different. Let's try something totally opposite and different than anything we've ever done before. And that's always fun. So that's what I'm working on, working on the challenge book a little bit every day because I told myself I 
and I was challenged to do 20 minutes a day on a project and so that's the project I picked. Also part of a reading challenge which I will confess I'm not doing very well at this particular time. Had lots of distractions and things that are uh, I should have been able to focus on it but I did not yet schedule myself a time every day to do it and until I schedule a time every day to do it I think it's got to be right before bed every night or it's not going to get done. Uh, and I, I will commit to doing that today, finding a time every day where I can do that book. Um, and I, I pulled out my books, but I just, I, I've only touched one in the pile, and I think today is day three. So that means I'm at least a book behind. Uh, so I need a couple hours to devote to that project. So I might have to wait till over the weekend for my catch-up book, but I'll make sure I do today's and then and be caught up. Because I really like the woman who's leading that, that particular challenge. She's amazing. She does such an incredible job summarizing and, and doing things with books. That helps me personally. Being visually challenged, doing a reading challenge is, is pretty ambitious to begin with. But uh, <clears throat> you do what you got to do. And I'm finding that her coaching and her challenges make it possible for me to consume content um, as a visually challenged person that I would not be able to otherwise consume. I, I'm not going to sit down and read a book cover to cover. And I'm definitely not going to read 30 books in 30 days cover to cover. It, it, it won't happen. Uh, number one, from a time aspect, but number two, from a vision aspect, not going to happen. So, you know, I can blow it up on my big screen TV, but even then it takes time to go through it. But she's taught us different ways and different strategies of reading and listening and consuming books that are like, you know, follow the 80-20 principle. You don't have to read every word in the book to get the, the most out of it and get what you need out of it. She teaches us to read for answers to questions and what we need to get out of a book and out of a source, not um, read it cover to cover. Because most of books have, you know, 20%, just like that 80-20 principle applies to anything else, it does to books as well. 20% of what's in the book gives you 80% of the results, true of everything and anything. So that's it. That's what I'm working on today. That's how things are going. If I can help in any way, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow to let you know what she's up to. Have a great night. Have a great day. Have a great whatever time you happen to be seeing this.